the Laurel Hobart situation of the transgender woman competing in the Olympics. When I put that video out, I was like, oh, I'm going to get fucking slammed on this. I've never in my whole life had a video with such a positive feedback. I was like, whoa, my idea of what the public's perception of that situation was so skewed because no one was saying anything. Mm. But now I actually take a lot of pleasure in thinking, what are my mum and dad saying in their front room behind closed doors? I imagine my mum and dad with the newspaper and my mum going, Jeff, that isn't right. He shouldn't be able, oh, I mean, she shouldn't be able to do that. And I imagine that going on. Yeah. Never in a million years my parents tweet that. But almost those conversations don't exist. But they do exist. They are happening. But they don't exist online anymore. Yeah. So, yeah, like, and again, like you say, about not being able to be wrong, right? Pronouns are now mandatory to be correct in Canada or that legal legislation. It's like illegal to get someone's pronoun wrong. By no, not in a million years would I ever intentionally misgender someone. Mm -hmm. If I saw that there was, uh, you know, a transgender woman born a man in front of me, I would not, I would, I would fully respect their decision and try and appropriately gender them to who I perceive them to be. But if I make a mistake, I should be allowed to make a mistake and they should be allowed to correct me. Mm. Go, no, sorry. I'm a female. And I go, I'm incredibly sorry. I'll be very polite about it. I'm a polite person. But we've almost lost the ability to be incorrect in the first place. You know, This is why so many people don't say anything though, because of cancel culture. And because they're so scared to be wrong that you just won't say anything altogether all and open their mouth about it. And I think that's a difficult thing because people pick up things from social media and think like, oh, everyone's against me. But like 20% of the UK is on Twitter. And most of the people aren't even using it anyway. It's a very strange platform, isn't it? So having an opinion from there and then just basing yourself on that can be pretty, pretty detrimental as well. So I think you've got to be careful with that. But we obviously had Alex on the podcast, didn't we? And we started the podcast by saying, we will probably fuck up. We will probably say something that is incorrect. And like, this is the point in having you here to kind of have that conversation so that other people can hear it and learn something. Because if we don't openly talk about it, no one's ever going to fucking know. And if you don't allow people to fuck up, how can we How can we ever learn from that? We're living in a world now where ignorance is almost, like the, it's the disappearance of ignorance. Like we're not allowed to not know about anything anymore. And even when someone accused me of being like transphobic or, you know, I don't understand a huge amount about what's going on, what isn't going on. We don't get taught this. I didn't get taught that at school. And people go, go educate yourself. Mm. But like, I'm trying to learn and, Funnily enough, I was getting torn down by someone on Twitter. And I said, well, will you come on the podcast? She said, no. And I was like, well, how you're saying get educated. I'm asking for help. I'm asking for a grown-up discussion. You're saying no. Yeah. And it's crazy how many conversations just then would go educate yourself. You know, all right, teach me. No, just there to scrutinize. And I think that people, my opinion with this kind of woke existence at the moment is that a lot of people of low status and low authoritarian manner. People have gone their whole lives without being able to tell people what to do. And that's not a bad thing. We need people like that. But now they've got hold of the first trend, in essence, that they can now step in on Twitter and social media and correct people, and make them conform to their ideologies. You must call this person this. You must do this. You must be cancelled. And we're giving a strange amount of power, not really real power, to people that now I've never had it before and I think they're getting very power hungry. And that's where I think this justice warrior movement's coming from. People that can't even bark an order to anyone at work now having a keyboard in the internet. Yeah. I think there's that certain element of it though, like how many, how many of those like scenarios so should we speak, should we talk about? I think there was one that was, and again, we're talking about it now so we're bringing it up. There was one, I think it was a train conductor who said like, hello, la ladies and gentlemen. And someone took offense by that and then reported this to the train line that was all over the place. It's they that, got sued, didn't they? Yeah. The yeah. train company um, got it's sued. That, it's that, I think it's called like the, the, like the Snow White effect in regards like, if, if we're here to talk about it now, we give it light and it's talked about. And like when Lab Bible post stuff and then you get in the thread, there's hundreds of thousands of people talking about it who potentially never would have even known about it if it hadn't been brought to the media. And we sometimes give it more of a voice potentially than it needed. I think it's also something where people do want to be enlightened and educated. And I think that situations like this, I actually think put a really bad light on, ironically put a bad light on the non-binary community. Mm. Because I'm sure there are a lot of people that are non-binary who see that and go, oh my God, you know, like what's this person doing? This person is not reflecting, you know, our community correctly. 
And I actually think you probably see that a lot in, in all of the LGBTQ plus uh, kind of communities where you kind of get that one person who, you know, I'm not even sure I could be wrong. I could be wrong. If that person that was non-binary, that could just be someone who's just after, you know, oh, I'm now non-binary. Let's, let's watch the world burn, you know, like yeah. in Batman. Some <laughs> people just want to watch the world burn. And like, if, if someone has genuinely taken offense from Good Morning Ladies and Gentlemen, I genuinely do see a problem in that. You know, you're, you're asking long-held traditions. That person's probably been conducting and greeting people on the train politely, may I add, 20, 30 years. Mm. And now because of someone's ideological change in how they perceive themselves in the current politics that surrounds it, people are now to change the rules for them. And although I, I completely can empathize with the rationale behind it, the scrutiny should not be fired back to the person. I always say to people, like with my content, even if you get offended by it, whatever, what do you think my motive is? What do you think my motive is for that? Yeah, I called you a cunt, but I want your attention so I can help you. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, the only way I make money is two books and a, an academy that trains people. All of which, if you really fucking hate it, I'll refund you. So you're not out of pocket. Cool. So we've got those things. That conductor coming on the train, what was his motive? Was it to offend someone? Was it to disregard someone's position of being non-binary? He was trying to fucking greet people politely on a train to make their morning that bit more pleasant. I, nothing like, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Can I see your tickets, please? Or have a great fucking day. What a lovely bloke. And he's facing scrutiny and that kills me. I think that's what you've got to look at as well. Like, what is the motive behind some, what someone said or how someone said it? Like, through criminal law for years, we've had men's rear. Like, what was the purpose of someone doing stuff and com committing the crime? And if someone's doing it out of um, just simply not understanding or, or they've done it by mistake, then yeah, th that needs to be learned from. But I don't think we should just be hell-bent on going after people just because they've they've made a mistake because it's not going to help anyone. And, and that's why, again, more people won't talk about that subject. And the same with, I think I messaged you about the the Laura Hubbard post. I think a lot of people within the, the trans community as well, it, it, I don't think it will help that community because it's going to be, you've already seen there's loads and loads of negative that's just surrounds it. And at the same time, I, f I feel for her as well because it's not, it's not really about her as a person. She's done nothing wrong. She's competing in a sport that she wants to compete in. And and that sometimes becomes the issue because then people just personally attack her instead of having conflict with the rules and regulations that have been kind of muddled by the Olympics. And as again, well. the fact that they haven't considered creating a trans category in the Olympics, the fact they haven't done that means that there will be more, I believe, and I could be wrong, more hostility towards trans populations. And when I stood up and put my hand up and go, I don't agree with this. I think you should have your own division. I'm doing so to actually try and protect their community. My motive was to do that, to say to people, hey, by the way, she's not done anything wrong. I don't think this should be happening. I believe a lot of you don't think it should be happening. I'd love to see the half million views that got to be seen by the committees and the people that be to change this and create a new division. Because ultimately, if this is the first domino of many, every domino that falls where a cisgender athlete loses their position to a trans athlete, I believe potentially the public perception of that community could be negated. And as someone said that out loud before, I'm not sure because then someone's just going to call me transphobic. And, you know, I've been called transphobic hundreds of times. There's uh, one guy on Twitter who is obsessed with me. I blocked him and he's still following and finding my tweets to comment on all of them. He's like, James is a transphobe. I was like, well, actually, mate, my, my initial discussion, my motive behind that was to ensure that there's not more hostility towards those populations and communities that needs to be. But ideally, I just want everyone to get on, get along well. You know, there is chat shit get banged, but ultimately that's to create a peaceful community. Yeah. The reason that I go after the Danielle Lloyds and the V shreds and all of this is because I want a happy community of people that are all getting what they pay for. And even when people are really mean, it's not like I'm attacking innocent people for no reason. There's always a motive.